Eight sex addicted monarchs, Edward VII, Edward quickly earned himself a reputation as a playboy prince who loved to whore, gamble, eat, and drink. Edward was nicknamed Dirty Birdie and Edward the Caresser because of his insatiable intimate drive. In the best brothel in Paris, Le Chabonnet, Edward rented his own private room for years in advance. He loved to have intimacy in a luxurious Sphinx bathtub filled with champagne. Edward had intimacy with the best Parisian courtesans. Horton Schneider was a French operetta star. The affair between Hortons and Edward inspired the famous French writer Emile Zola to write his novel titled Nana. Edward spent nights also with the famous English courtesan Cora Pearl. Another lady who shared Edward's bed was Italian courtesan Giulia Barucci, who called herself the number one whore in Paris. When she was introduced to Edward, she let her dress fall to the ground and stood completely naked in front of him. When she was criticized, she replied, what did you not tell me to behave properly to His Royal Highness? I showed him the best I have, and it was free. Althal Edward got married to Princess Alexandra of Denmark in 1863 and had six children with her. This didn't stop him from having many mistresses. As for Alexandra, she accepted her husband's infidelities and acknowledged his mistresses. They both knew they were married for dynastic purposes. According to most biographers, Edward had at least 50 mistresses. Edward's love affairs resulted in scandals, suicides, and divorces, and were damaging to the reputation of the British monarchy. Henry VIII, Henry's intimate encounters with mistresses, and his wives resulted in at least 11 and possibly more than 13 pregnancies. Six children born to Catherine of Aragon were stillborn or died shortly after birth. Only three pregnancies produced healthy children. Catherine of Aragon, Elizabeth Blount, and Anne Boleyn each bore Henry a child who survived childhood. Edward VI died aged 15. Venereal disease was not thought to be responsible for his lack of living children since Henry was never treated for syphilis. His divorce from Anne of Cleves was pursued partly on the grounds of intimate incapacity because he claimed he lacked will and power to consummate the marriage. He blamed the absence of intimacy on his German wife's lack of attractiveness and unpleasant bodily odor. Henry, having felt her stomach and breasts, also claimed she was no virgin. At Anne Boleyn's trial, her brother George was asked whether Anne ever told his wife, Jane Boleyn, that the king was incapable of intimate intercourse, implying Henry was unable to attain or sustain an erection. The researchers suggest Henry's blood carried the rare Kell antigen, a protein that triggers immune responses, while that of his intimate partners did not. It made them poor reproductive matches. Louis XIV. As king, Louis could freely womanize, and so he did pursuing one beauty after another, whether married or single, lady's maid or lady of the court. Through much of his reign, Louis managed to spend almost every night with his wife, with whom he dutifully conceived potential heirs to the throne, devote several hours to dalliances with his court son of the moment, and still lead the nation without the advice of a chief minister. We learn of Athanas de Rochecourt de Mordmart's thick, corn-colored hair which curled artlessly about her shoulders, her eyes, huge, blue, and very slightly exophthalmic, her famously devastating wit, and her Sears-like fecundity. In the words of a contemporary, her powder lights very quickly. Louise made Athanas his primary mistress for most of a decade, providing her with fabulous apartments at Vercelles on the same floor as the queen and a chateau of her own at Kleine, where she employed 1,200 gardeners and had 8,000 daffodils planted during a single season and he used his royal authority to make titled nobles of the children they conceived on the wrong side of the sheets. When the king, as intent on achieving military glory as intimate glow, went to war to exert his territorial adrenaline, he brought along his entire household, which sometimes amounted to a royal harem. Henry VI and Margaret of France Henry's womanizing became legendary, earning him the nickname of Le Verge Gallant. His intimate appetite was said to have been insatiable, and he always kept mistresses, often several at a time, as well as engaging in random intimate encounters and visits to brothels. Even so, he tended to elevate one mistress above the others and shower her with money, honors, and promises. His two most famous mistresses of this type were Gabriel Distres, who died in 1599, and her successor, Henriette Dintraigues, who involved herself in plots against the crown. Henry promised marriage to each of them, exposing himself to a series of political problems, the Queen of France was full of passion. Her husband, who was focused more on literature, politics, and own frustrations, wasn't very attractive for her. 
She was said to have had many romances and affairs, but some of these stories were only gossip. Her confirmed lovers were Joseph Boniface de la Mole, a nobleman from Marcel, Louis de Bussy d'Ambroise, a nobleman of the court of Henry III, Jacques de Harley, a nobleman and grand squire of Margaret's youngest brother, Francis Duke of Anjou. Her attempts to influence politics, protect Protestants, and dangerous efforts to control the court in her own life led to Margaret being imprisoned by her brother Henry III for 18 years. Her stay in the castle of Usson in Auvergne took place during the reign of her brother, but also that of her husband, who decided to divorce her, Henry I. On 11 November 1100, Henry married Matilda, the daughter of Malcolm III of Scotland in Westminster Abbey. Henry was now around 31 years old, but late marriages for noblemen were not unusual in the 11th century. The pair had probably first met earlier the previous decade, possibly being introduced through Bishop Osmond of Salisbury. Historian Warren Hollister argues that Henry and Matilda were emotionally close, but their union was also certainly politically motivated. Henry had a considerable intimate appetite and enjoyed a substantial number of intimate partners, resulting in many illegitimate children, at least nine sons and thirteen daughters, many of whom he appears to have recognized and supported. It was normal for unmarried Anglo-Norman noblemen to have intimate relations with courtsons and local women, and kings were also expected to have mistresses. Some of these relationships occurred before Henry was married, but many others took place after his marriage to Matilda. Henry had a wide range of mistresses from a range of backgrounds, and the relationships appear to have been conducted relatively openly. He may have chosen some of his noble mistresses for political purposes, but the evidence to support this theory is limited. Marie of Romania, Marie grew into one of the most beautiful and wealthiest princesses of Europe. She was also known for her spunk and talent, writing, painting, sculpting, and horsemanship. After refusing a proposal from her first cousin, the future King George V, her parents did not believe first cousins should wed. A marriage was arranged in 1892 between 17-year-old Marie and Crown Prince Ferdinand of Romania, heir apparent of King Carol I. Not long after her marriage, Marie met Lieutenant Giura Cantacuzin, a member of an ancient Romanian princely family. Like Marie, he was high-spirited and known for his expert horsemanship. They became romantically involved, but once the affair became public knowledge, Marie was sent away. She gave birth to a child who was either stillborn or sent to an orphanage. Her second child, Mignon, was rumored to have been fathered by Cantacuzin as well. Throughout the years, Marie became romantically involved with several men, mostly for political purposes, including Waldorf Astor, Grand Duke Boris Vladimirovich of Russia, Prince Barbie Sturby, who was briefly Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Romania, Waldorf Astor, Second Viscount Astor, and Joe Boyle, a wealthy businessman who was made even richer from Klondike gold. Caligula. Suetonius' biography of the emperor reports that the imperial palace was made into a brothel. The emperor's promiscuity reputedly knew no bounds. He respected neither his own chastity nor that of anyone else. The more powerful Caligula was, the greater his intimate urge, so he satisfied his desire for intimacy wherever he went and with whoever he wanted. He slept equally with women and men, Caligula loved his horse, Incitatus, and while he was suspicious of other people, he placed unwavering trust in his equine friend. Incitatus was not the only strange relationship in Caligula's life. The Roman ruler allegedly had incestuous relationships with his three sisters. Some even whispered that he impregnated one of his sisters, Drusilla, and ripped the baby out of her womb. Though this tidbit is understood to be purely fictitious, he did have a strange affinity for Drusilla and the other sisters. When Drusilla died, Caligula consecrated her as a goddess, something that was beyond unusual even for the time. Additionally, historians mention affairs with various men, including his brother-in-law Marcus Lepidus. Caligula, despite many strange intimate pleasures, was actually impotent, so he obviously tried to solve that problem in various perverse ways.